Okay, hello everybody. This is Joey. I am back for a January update. I'm going to try to do this at least once a month. Uh, unlike running a half marathon every month, once a month. Because I said I was going to run a half marathon once a month. And that ain't going to happen. Because <laughs> um, I've not been training. And I, I never found a half marathon that I thought I wanted to do in January and I have not been training and the one that I thought I might want to do somebody else did that I know and it uh, got cancelled due to bad weather and also I've not been training so <laughs> uh, if you notice a the theme there I have not been training so uh, the the big thing I guess now is to start training. So I'm going to do that this weekend. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I'll do this weekend, but it will be some kind of training. I don't know if I'll run or walk or what have you, but uh, I really got to get into some kind of rhythm or groove because at work uh, there was a group of people at work. We all got together and decided that, hey, we're going to try to lose some weight. Uh, so we put 50 bucks each into a pot. And the goal is to lose 30 pounds by the end of April, which I know I can do. I know I can do this. It's, I'm, I let myself get out of shape, kind of, you know, over the past couple of months and so you know it should be pretty easy actually for me to get rid of some of this weight because it's you know so out of hand um, right now on my home scale I'm weighing in at around 229 ish so uh, with all my clothes on and my tools and crap at work you know I uh, can't remember what I weigh but it was like 236 I think so um, anyway I've lost about five pounds so far according to the scale at work and about 10 pounds according to the scale at home but I think I put on a couple of pounds between the time I weighed at work and the time that I weighed at home so um, from my official start at work, I've lost five pounds, but then I must have gained five pounds at some between the time that I weighed in and the time I actually started trying to actually lose weight. Um, so I, I've kind of had a drop off of ten pounds uh, just on my own personal scale. Uh, so that's a long, complicated story, right? <laughs> But it's really not that complicated. It's incredibly simple. Um, so I'm already getting to the point, though, right now that just through diet alone, I'm not going to be able to uh, lose any more weight, really. I'm going to have to start exercise. I mean, I could, you know, if I maintain kind of a starvation diet, but uh, I don't really want to do that. That's not healthy. That's not fun. It's not practical. Um, it does have, well, you know, I don't want to get off on tangent here. It's it's kind of interesting. It's an interesting thing to do, uh, to be hungry. Uh, there was a, I read it online just a little, like two or three days ago, really. It's like, uh, to lose weight, you need to have like this, uh, develop a, you know how you develop taste for certain foods? You'll eat foods um, that you don't really like, but after a while you're like, hey, you know, I kind of like this now, especially since I eat it every day or have to eat it every day or whatever. Um, so in that same sense, you should develop that uh, uh, a like for the feeling of hunger. So I think that's part of my problem is... If I feel hungry, bam, I go to eat. I want to eat something right then, you know? And I think I need to kind of do the uh, 
Buddhist thing here and <laughs> um, uh, live in the moment and say, wow, I'm hungry. And what is this sensation that I'm feeling? You know, how does it make me feel? What do I, uh, what, what am I experiencing here? I, so just trying to, you know, uh, appreciate it. The feeling of hunger. So I'm sure there's a lot of people out there that don't appreciate the feeling of hunger, but, uh, you know, this is definitely a first world problem if there ever was one, but hey, you know, I live in the first world. So anyway, working on that, developing the sense of the, the, the like of the sense of hunger. So I'm working on that. Great. But to lose more weight, I'm going to have to start doing something. So this weekend, I shall start uh, back running or walking and running, as the case may be. Uh, what else do I want to talk about? Work. Uh, work is actually going okay right now. Uh, we're not working a whole lot of overtime, which is nice. Uh, I did work some overtime last week and the week before. I uh, was helping out uh, our inventory control people. I used to work in inventory control, so I know how to do things. So I was working on that uh, and helping them get some things cleaned up, helping them uh, find some stuff that we lost, and um, just getting things in order. And so... I'm actually a little optimistic about work right now. I feel like working. Uh, normally, I'm the kind of person that uh, I don't really, I don't really care to work all that much. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't bother me to work. I, you know, go to work. I get paid. I do what I'm supposed to do. Uh, I try my best. I do all that kind of stuff. But that's not, you know, that's not how I live my life. I don't live my life around work. I don't live my life to go to work. Um, I don't socialize, uh, for the most part, you know, I don't socialize with the people that I work with. Um, you know, there's a, like basically one person right now, um, that I work with that's on my Facebook. Uh, but he kind of feel, he's like a very similar person to me. So he feels the same way. And so I, there's not a lot of drama there. Um, and uh, I do actually have one other person that works for the same company, but we don't work in the same account or building or even the same town. So, uh, there's actually two of my coworkers on there, but anyway, uh, don't do a lot of socializing with the people at work. Uh, I just go there to work and do the job and then I come home. Uh, but here lately I'm going through this little phase where I'm, okay with work I'm okay with working overtime I don't know I've never been okay with working overtime but for whatever reason I'm like okay with it the past few weeks um what else uh I'm like checking my work email at home you know I'm like doing stuff at home and writing notes to myself about work at home which I've never done really before so I don't know why I'm feeling so optimistic about work. It's not really that I feel optimistic about it. It's just that I feel like putting more effort into it. Uh, instead of just doing what needs to be done, kind of doing the a little above and beyond type stuff for whatever reason. I'm not trying to get a raise. I'm not trying to get a promotion because um, those opportunities are out there, but I just want to do it because I want to. Uh, so that's just an interesting tidbit. That's not really anything that's, um, uh, I don't think, I don't foresee myself, you know, going down that path forever, you know, <laughs> of becoming a workaholic and taking my work home and doing all that stuff. Uh, what else am I working on? What else am I doing? Uh, trying to eat a little bit healthier, um, of course, not being incredibly successful with that. Wow, can you hear that? I don't know if you can hear that. I've got a new microphone. I'm going to hold it up. It's it's like one of those fancy 
uh, microphones. I just really wanted one, so I bought one, uh, which is stupid uh, for reasons I'll explain later. But uh, I think it does sound better than the microphone I have been using, which is the microphone that was on the camera, like right up here on top of the camera. So, uh, and I'm looking at the I've got this bad habit of looking at myself on the screen instead of looking at the camera. I don't know why I can't do that, but I'm trying to stare at, there's like a little blue dot on the front of the camera and I'm trying to stare at that. So, but anyway, the, uh, guys are outside like lifting the dumpster up and dumping the dumpster out and it's incredibly loud, but this is like one of those condenser mics. So it, like when I go over here, there's not, a, you know, you probably can't hear me as well. So you have to be kind of right in front of it and talking directly to it. Um, so anyway, got way off on a tangent there. Forgot what else I was talking about. got this mic. Uh, and I forgot what, Oh, eating healthy. I got an apple. Uh, my boss gave me this apple. Uh, apparently, she is also in on the the thirty pound challenge and trying to get healthy. But uh, she might be having some gallbladder problems, and she can't handle her fruit very well. So, I got this apple um, from her, and I've got four more just like it in their fridge. I'm um, not having too much success with the eating healthier, but I'm definitely eating fewer calories, which is, you know, much better. You know, going from eating, you know, 4,000, 4,500 calories a day to eating 2,000 calories a day is a big step, you know, or some, you know, sometimes even less. I'm actually trying to do. Um, about 1,500 calories a day, 15 to 1,700 calories a day. Uh, I'm not that great at estimating calories, so I don't know. I'll, I'll probably go over some days and under some days. Um, I'm trying to do it without tracking it explicitly. I hate tracking it explicitly online, like because I've used a couple of websites like FatSecret.com and uh, myfitnesspal.com and they're they're great websites they have a lot to offer uh, myfitnesspal has a huge database of food and anything you type in there it's going to come up and give you the calories for it which is good but uh, I just I need to learn I need to learn to eat in a way that is healthier and I, where I'm not constantly dependent on this thing tracking my calories to say, well, you know, I've got this exact number of calories that I can eat today and how many I've eaten so far and what do I got left and how much can I squeeze in, you know, to get, still stay under my goal and all kinds of stuff. So it's cool to track, but it's not, it, you know, especially if you're like, uh, having a hard time, you know, with the discipline of it or whatever, or keeping up with it, it's, it's a good tool, but I can't see myself living by that tool for the rest of my life. So, um, trying to watch what I eat, trying to keep it down, you know, um, I have good days and bad days. Like, um, today was kind of bad. Uh, I got up, um, bought some avocados to make some guacamole so I made the guacamole and pretty much ate all of it two avocados worth plus the chips uh the corn chips that it takes to eat two avocados worth of guacamole so it's quite a bit and uh then I ate less of a lunch you know I had a chicken breast and some uh wraps and then when I got home I ate uh some banana chips and two tea pieces of toast with some butter on it um, and the butter's getting me. I gotta watch my butter intake, but um, it is light butter that's not doesn't have as many calories in it, so that's a little bit better. But still, uh, but I am working on it. I'm trying to get better about it. Um, what else am I working on? 
I'm running for president. I officially announced my candidacy for president of the United States. Um, I have a website, 2012.josephbells.com. You can go there. Uh, I've got a couple of things up there already uh, that I've been working on as far as just my platform. I'm putting it out there. This is what I'd want to do if I were to become president. I don't have any realistic expectations of becoming president, um, but mostly because, you know, the only people that know about it are the people on my Facebook. Uh, <laughs> but... Um, it kind of gives me, I've been wanting to do this project uh, where I develop my own political platform. And uh, the first plank of my platform that I posted was about um, what, what was it about? And now I'm having a Rick Perry moment. Uh, <laughs> it was election reform and uh, I basically stole this plank straight from the Green Party. Um, instant runoff voting, gotta have it. Uh, if you don't know what it is, look it up. Basically, uh, what it is, if you have a slate of five candidates that are on the ballot, uh, then you rank them one through five in accordance to your preference. So, uh, this past election, you know, you would have uh, Barack Obama on there, and you'd have John McCain on there, and you'd have Ralph Nader, and who else, Bob Barr, who else, whoever else ran. And um, then you would rank them, you know, one through four. And so this allows you to um, rank your candidates in the order in which you would like to uh, elect them, but it gives a candidate, uh, it gives you a choice. It gives you a choice um, if you choose to vote for, say you choose to vote for Ralph Nader, in, 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 in our current system you're basically throwing your vote away because uh, there's no way Ralph Nader is going to get elected. Uh, he, he just, you know, especially in the last election, you knew he was polling extremely low, but you didn't feel like voting for either of the other candidates. But one of the other candidates might be more preferable to you than the other. You know, like, say, uh, you really liked Ralph Nader, um, but if you couldn't have Ralph Nader, would you rather have John McCain, maybe? You know, so you put him number two, and then... Uh, after that, maybe Bob Barr. Then after that, maybe Barack Obama. Well, the way it works is uh, they count all the votes, all the number one votes. Take everybody's number one votes, and they tally them all up. If somebody gets 50% of the vote plus one vote, so a simple majority, that person instantly wins the election. That's That person wins because they got a majority of the votes, the number one votes. However, if they don't get a majority of the votes, then the person that's on the bottom of the list drops off the list. So they take that person and they move down to their number twos and promote those to number ones and so forth and so on. And so all of those votes get counted as number one votes and so if all of those people uh, voted for uh, you know a particular candidate you know and that candidate got um, enough votes enough number two votes uh, to give them a majority if you convert them to number one votes then that candidate will become president. It's it's a little bit difficult for me personally to explain because I'm not good at explaining simple things. <laughs> but it's 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 actually pretty simple and it's very effective um uh, at getting uh lower tier candidates more exposure uh because uh, I I just abhor the two party system. 
and the two-party system is ridiculous. And if you can get rid of the two-party system uh, and go to a, a multi-party system, then I think we could get a lot more uh, sane... You'd have a lot more sane things going on, you know, and you'd, there'd be less opportunity for corruption uh, because you, you would have people... Because uh, right now you have Democrats pointing at Republicans and Republicans pointing at Democrats, and they do it no matter what on every issue. And every issue they take a side and oppose each other on it, you know. Although I hate to say oppose because most of their positions are not opposite positions. They're actually very close together, and the opposite positions like way over here, you know. And they want you to think that there's a difference, but there's really not. But anyway... I'm getting way, way out there with that. But anyway, voting reform, number one plank on my presidential uh, platform. Uh, and I also talk about ballot access and things like that, um, which means how you get on the ballot. And uh, uh, I would want to make it uh, equal in a certain in a certain way. I'd want to make it equal for everybody. So I, I give kind of a blanket Everybody that wants to run it as an independent has to do this. Uh, everybody that wants to run has to do has to do this to get on the ballot. They have to. Uh, it's like one percent of the population has to uh, sign a petition, and um, there's some other stipulations. Uh, and if you want to actually have a political party stamped onto your um, name on the ballot, then you need to uh, get five percent of the people to um, uh, sign a petition and you need to have that political party's uh, a, you know seal of approval so it makes it more difficult because that's a premium right you know when you go to the steakhouse you can get the hamburger steak for six dollars or you can get the t-bone steak for sixteen dollars right so <laughs> Um, there's a premium on the T-bone and on, you know, the hamburger, you just have to do, pay the regular cost. So, uh, if you just want to get your name on the ballot, you got to get 1% of the vote. If you want to get your name on the ballot and you want to get, um, get that R or that D or that libertarian or that green party or whatever stamped onto the, next to it and, and everything that involves and all the automatic, uh, 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 loyalty that that gets you, then you need to pay a premium price for that. So you got to get your party's permission, A number one and A number two. You got to get 5% of the people to go along with it. I think it's brilliant. <laughs> uh, platform party number, party platform number two, or not party, but my personal platform number two is um, universal health care. I think. Universal health care is something that is within our means to do, um, especially if you break down uh, how health care works, who uses health care, things like that. So most, most of the health care in the United States is used by a very small percent, like an incredibly small percentage of the the population i mean everybody goes to the doctor but uh the the really high cost stuff and things like that are, are used by a, a small portion of people and most of those people are already on government uh assisted health care so um we're already incurring a lot of that expense so that's not going to be um, you're going to have additional expense, but it's it's money that's already going into um, a pot. So uh, you're just going to allow everybody to uh, take out of the pot, um, regardless of of you know whether or not they have. There won't be any more health insurance. You'll just go to the doctor when you're sick. And, uh, of course, there'll be a lot of initiatives we'll have to go along with this. A lot of pre preventative care. Um, uh, a lot of education. 
uh, really uh, finding uh, effective ways to uh, compensate doctors to make sure we don't lose our best and brightest because uh, the last thing you want to do is convert um, uh, the medical profession into a thirty thousand dollar a year job you know you want to have your best and brightest doing it and uh, you want them to be well compensated so those are some issues we would have to work out there um, but I think we can do it I really do I think if we all put our heads together we could figure out how we're going to do this how we're gonna you know prevent um, a lot of things I mean but you know I can see a lot of a lot of uh taxation that can happen that can help us raise the money for this you know you could uh you can have uh an outside the government healthcare system you know where you can go and go to your own doctor and um for things like cosmetic surgery and all that crap that the government you know that people don't need that's just a luxury item Right, so uh, you can tax the heck out of that, you know. You can tax the heck out of cigarettes. You can tax the heck out of alcohol. You can tax the heck out of any unhealthy thing out there um, to uh, not only discourage people from purchasing those items, you know, but if people do purchase those items, then that money is going to go to pay for their health care later on when they have medical issues due to using those items. Um, so... That that's some universal health care. Just from a moral standpoint, um, it's something we have to do. It's we cannot continue down this road of in, of the way our health care system. I mean, the way our health care system works now is ridiculous. And if you continue down this road, you're not going to see uh, any great improvements uh in the health of people that can't afford can't afford it and it's only going to get more expensive and people more and more people are going to drop off if i wasn't working i couldn't have you know um at a job where that already provided health insurance i couldn't afford health insurance and even the health insurance i have now is there but it's I have a two thousand dollar deductible. I don't spend two thousand dollars in a year on medical expenses ever. So, <laughs> um, I mean, I'm sure I have in the past, but um, when I was a kid, I think I'm probably sure that I've done that. But um, I just now I don't. Not every year do I spend two thousand dollars on medical care. Uh, a couple of years ago, I spent. Probably about twelve hundred bucks on medical care, and my deductible is fifteen hundred at that time. You know, and the chirpy person at the insurance company said, "Yeah, yeah, you got to pay all this money, and we don't pay any of it. But you know, you're at twelve hundred dollars now. Spend three more hundred dollars, and you can get uh, covered." Well, I don't. If I don't get sick, what do I? I can't spend three hundred dollars. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, it's uh I'm not gonna go to the doctor just so I can spend three hundred more dollars just so I can get some a little discount you know get a discount on my health insurance i'm I'm re on my health care beyond that point i mean it's ridiculous um so it's like buy buy ten get one free when you only need one you know <laughs> you're not gonna buy ten to get the one free when you only need one. So and that's it's the same thing. So, uh, it I just health, universal health care has got to happen, and uh, so you know that that's something that I I I really want to. If I were really become president, that's something I'd really want to work on. Um, I think I haven't written about this yet. I think my third platform is going to be a uh, platform plank is going to be kind of a monetary uh, thing, taxation thing. And what I would like to do is do away with the IRS and do away with payroll, uh, people's taxes, income tax, um, on individuals, no individual income tax. Uh, 
man, I just can't. Yeah, we gotta do away. <laughs> gotta do away with that too, because you're you're basically getting penalized for working. So, <laughs> um, so so what 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 needs to happen there is. Uh, corporations, of course, need to pay more in taxes uh, and just remove the loopholes. There will be no loopholes. You will pay taxes. Um, every corporation will, will pay taxes. And another thing we'll have to do, and this is, I don't want to seem isolation, excuse me, I don't want to seem isolationist, but you can't uh, continue, we cannot continue to function as a country with a high le with our high level of standard of living and expect to compete with countries like India and China and uh M Indonesia, Malaysia, uh Vietnam, all these countries where the standard of living is uh incredibly low uh we cannot compete with them one on one. We cannot ever hope to compete with them one-on-one -on -one because we're always going to lose out on labor uh, costs and we're always going to lose out on on taxation because uh, those governments don't make our companies pay taxes so our companies here's how this works our companies um, can pick up a whole factory and move it to Malaysia and pay less in labor, less in taxes, and uh, um, that that goes straight to their bottom line right there. So so you that that just galls me that you can you can move a whole factory to another country and um, you you pay less in taxes. I don't. I don't get that. I don't understand that. Not one bit. Um, so we need to go back to uh, the way the the founding fathers uh, intended for the co the country to be funded, and that was through um, interstate commerce and uh, tariffs. So when uh, pr goods and services are uh, uh, shipped into the United States, we should be, you know, there should be taxes on that. And we're in a, such a situation now that it would be difficult to implement that. So it would have to be a, a longer process than I, w I would love to go into office and say, okay, now if you want to ship computers into the United States, you must pay a hundred dollar tax on each computer, you know, or a two hundred dollar tax on each computer, or whatever, you know. And uh, then they would be, those companies would be clamoring to come back, but they're, you know, that they it would take time. So, and that would put our relations with other countries in uh, not so great of terms. So, you would have to phase it in over time. Uh, you would have to gradually. Uh, increase the incentives to move um, the jobs back to the United States and you would have to uh, start to increase your uh, your tariff as time goes by. I mean we would we would have to withdraw from from a lot of the free trade treaties and things like that that we're in um, but uh, it's just going to take an acknowledgement that um, a lot of these companies, a lot of companies out there now, even if they're based in the United States, are not are not U.S. companies. Those those companies and their leadership have no allegiance to the, or loyalty to the United States. They're here because that's where their founders were born, and um, you know they're perfectly fine having all their stuff manufactured overseas and bringing it over here. Uh, but that's just not sustainable. That's there's no way we can sustain that uh, in any kind of way. Uh, the a number two thing that will kind of help with that is, um, and getting a little philosophical here, but is is getting away from the consumer 
the consumer culture. Uh, people are so caught up with their toys and <laughs> with their toys and things and stuff and uh, that's no way to go through life. You can't be constantly uh, looking for the next big thing, you know, I mean, the next iPhone, the next Android phone, the next this and that and that and buying them all and it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's completely unnecessary. It's um, puts people under such a high level of stress. Uh, it puts people in very bad position. I mean, I, I was down with the consumer culture. I had, I mean, there were times when I had like five computers in my house and they were all networked together and, um, you know, I had tons and tons of DVDs. I had tons of books. I, you know, I have all this stuff. I have furniture I never sit on. I have uh, dishes I never use. I have pots and pans I never use. I have all this stuff I never use. Um, buying stuff just for the sake of having it. Um, it's all ridiculous. It's it's completely unnecessary. It's and I got into that position because I was so um, caught up in, in the consumer, you know, not even keeping up with the Joneses, but just, I want to have this, I want to have that, I want to do this, I want to do that. So, I finally realized how ridiculous that is. That's stupid. <laughs> you don't need all that stuff to be happy. You don't need... Uh, stuff period to be happy it's nice to have stuff um, it's nice to have food shelter clothing uh, a w transportation you know the bare necessities uh, those are great to have but beyond that uh, I found that the more you accumulate the it's it's the law of diminishing returns you know I mean uh, if you have 10,000 widgets, if you have 10 widgets and you get uh, one more, that's 11 widgets, you know, that's a lot, you know, ooh, I got 11 widgets, you got 10,000 widgets, you get one more, oh, I got 10,000 and one widgets, not nearly as, you know, once you start to get out there, you're like, uh, this is not as great as I thought it was, it's not as great as, it, you stop getting that high, you know what I mean, it's like, um, people who take uh, heroin or take cocaine or all these other drugs uh, you know they, they have to keep taking more and more to get the same level of high and it's the same thing with the com consumer um, thing it's you, you gotta keep buying more and more and more and more and I see people there's people at work and the, the people I work with that I know make less money than I do that have families to support and they've got like big houses and uh, cable television and this and that and all these bills to pay and child support and this and I'm like enough has to be enough at some point so obviously you can't force everybody to feel this way you can't force everybody to um, you can't you can't force people to not want things but you can you can educate people you can you can say you, you can tell people you can put the message out there do you really need this do you really need that and once once you start to get away from that consumer culture uh and you don't need so much to to live uh then we don't have to have so many we don't have to have so many jobs people don't have to work you know, when I was a kid, uh, a lot of families, you know, only one parent worked out of the family. The mom or the dad worked, you know. Sometimes, you know, the mom would have a uh, uh, a part-time job or the dad would have a part-time job and the other one would have a full-time job. Maybe, you know, just to keep them busy, they'd have a part-time job. But you didn't have to. You didn't have to work. Uh, you didn't have all these bills you had to pay. You didn't have all this stuff you had to buy. Um you could buy stuff, but I mean, it was, 
now it's just overwhelming. It's overwhelming. And and, and just it's not stuff we're entitled to. We're not entitled to have all this stuff. We're not meant to have all this stuff. Uh, you, you can get it if you want it, but do you really want it? Do you really want it that bad? I mean, does it make your life that much more interesting to have, um, you know, that extra widget? Does that extra widget, does the 10,000 and first widget make your life any better? The answer is no. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, it's that simple. I mean, you just, it, it's going to take a change of thinking, you know, but uh, once you get away from that, uh, you won't, you won't need this, this crazy economy that we've got to uh, make the people happy to get, uh, to make progress and, and things like that. So, uh, because to me, to pro progress is not measured in in how many computers you have, how many iPhones you got, you know what your car looks like, how many cars you got, how you know how big your house is, all of this. That's not how progress is measured. Progress is measured in increase of knowledge. Uh, what can we do to increase our knowledge as a society uh, and as people? So uh, that will get me on to point four, which will be education, and I'll talk about that some other time. Because I know this video is getting rather lengthy, but what the heck? I'm 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 got permission from YouTube to to post videos of way over 15 minutes, so uh, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna keep posting them on up there, getting up in the you know hour long videos. Hopefully, it won't get hour long, but this one might be getting there. I don't know. I didn't look at the time down here in the corner to see when I started. So it might get up there, and I hope this is all recorded because my voice is starting to get tired. And uh, if you can't hear this, or I have to re-record it, it's gonna suck. Uh, but that's fine. What else do I want to talk about? Do I want to talk anything? Yeah, I just want to I'm get away from the presidential thing, you know, and talk about uh, minimalism a little bit, which is a topic that I think that I've wanted to talk about for a little while, but haven't. And I'm not, I'm just going to briefly mention it here because I want to kind of devote a whole video to it, you know? Uh, but I'm looking around my apartment right now and looking and you see this crap. This, I'm not good at the camera. You see this crap right here. This, it's like my couch, this couch right here, this futon, there's like a futon right here. It's going away. Like, I've already talked to my boss about it, and her sister um, had a house fire, and so they've been needing some furniture, you know, to uh, 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 help them get back reestablished. So, hey, a futon, you know, you could sleep on it. So, good deal. Uh, if people come over and want to be a guest in my home, uh, I think I still have an air mattress, which I'm probably going to hang on to, and uh, they could sleep on the floor. So, or they could sleep in my bed and I'll sleep on the floor. Who cares? Uh, but I never have guests anyway, so kind of a moot point. Uh, but that's going away. And all this shit that's piled on to the couch is going away. It'll have to go away because there won't be a couch to pile it on. Uh, what else? Uh, I've got some Nicky Knacks over here. I've got a bookshelf uh, with some books on it. Eh. Uh, I'll read them and then I'll take them to the used bookstore and somebody else can read them uh, for a nominal fee. I've got a bunch of DVDs over here that I've already boxed up and I just got to take them down there to the used bookstore. Uh, I work nights, so uh, it's not always convenient for me to go, you know, because I got to sleep during the day. I got to sleep. I have to sleep. Um, and I got another box over here with some Goodwill stuff in it. Um, what else? Um, the floor's pr pretty empty. I've got most of my bedroom emptied out. Uh, I got my bicycle that I never ride, but, um, I taught myself out of getting rid of that. Because every time I buy, I've bought like five bicycles. And I'll buy the bicycle and I'll ride it for like a month and then I'll hang it up on a hook on the wall and I ride it for a year and say, you know what, I'm just going to get rid of that bike. I'm never going to ride it again. Eh. As soon as I get rid of it, I'm like, oh, 
so want to go ride a bike right now. <laughs> so I'm going to leave it up there. That bike, I'm keeping that bike. That bike, it's a good bike. It's a Trek. Um, it's like a half road, half... It's really kind of a road bike. Uh, it's I think they call it like a hybrid or something like that, but it's uh, I'll do a video about it sometime. Uh, I need to be writing down all my video ideas, by the way, because I'll never remember them. What else do I got in here? I got some stuff on the walls. I'll, I'll keep all the stuff on the walls, I think. I got a chalkboard and uh, stuff. Uh, I got my washer and dryer. Uh, I don't I don't know what I'm going to do with my washer and dryer. Um, I don't know. I, I'm definitely keeping it as long as I'm in this apartment, but I don't I, w I want to move into a smaller apartment. Um So I, I don't know that I'll be able to find a, a, a cheaper, smaller apartment that has washer and dryer hookups. So we'll see how that goes. Uh, my lease is not up till like the end of August, and I only have to give a 30 days notice. So I've got to July to think about it, and it's just now January. So several months to think on the subject. Uh, but I would love, love to pay like a hundred bucks less a month. Wow, that'd be awesome, you know. So. Uh, I'll have to look around for that. I might actually move down to Murfreesboro, Tennessee. It's a college town, so there's a lot of, you know, smaller um, things to live in. So if I if I do end up... Um, if I do end up having to move, I'll, I'll just sell them. I'll sell them on Craigslist, you know, or something. Or, you know, I'll call my mom and dad, my brother, or something, see if, see if they need it. But uh, if they don't, then I'll... I'll sell it on Craigslist and move into my smaller apartment. Uh, oh, getting out of debt. That's another big goal that I got. Um, so, I've been running the numbers on it. And uh, I've got some I got some money kind of coming in. Uh, I've got my tax return coming in. Because uh, I, pay I pay an extra. I'm terrible at saving money. So... <laughs> um, I'm actually not that bad at saving money, but, um, the, you know, I'll, I'll get like this, I'm not bipolar, but I'll have a bipolar moment, you know, and I'll buy something that, that I don't, don't really need, and, um, <laughs> I'll buy something I don't need, and once I bought it, you know, then I've blown that money that I've been saving up. So, uh, uh, I like to let the government save my money for me. I don't know what I would do once I did away with the, uh, wow, what would I do? You know, I guess I'd put it in CDs or something like that. Uh, and you, gosh, that's a great idea. You, mm, I'm going to write that in my notebook. <laughs> Stop taking $10 out each check to give extra money to the government. Start putting $10 per check into a CD. Uh, gosh, that's a great idea. I don't, why did I not think of this earlier? Anyway, um, what was I going to say? Oh, getting out of debt. Getting out of debt. So, that was another reason I've been selling a lot of stuff, because I got into debt to buy the stuff, so you sell the stuff to get out of debt. That's how it works. Um, <laughs> so I'm trying to get out of debt. I got my tax return coming in, and after my tax return... And and I got a, I got another check coming in from work. Uh, we're getting like a, a little quarterly bonus, and uh, you know, in the past several years we haven't. I mean, it's been really small. You know, it'd be like twenty bucks or something like that. But this year we've gotten two in a row. You know, that were like almost two hundred. One of them was two hundred bucks, and this one's gonna be almost two hundred bucks, which kind of translates into a hundred dollars after the taxes and everything. But Still, that's going to be another hundred bucks I can throw at that debt. So once I, once I get that and that, I'll have about eighteen hundred bucks left on a credit card, and uh, that's at zero percent interest right now because I surfed the balance uh, to it, and that will be all of my consumer debt, um, other than my car. So um, I'm hoping that I can get rid of that that eighteen hundred bucks uh, this year. So, uh, I might not be able to travel this year like I want to, uh, unless I can work some overtime or 
uh, get some more bonus checks or get a giant raise, which ain't going to happen. Um, or get a new job that pays me a whole lot more. Not going to happen. So <laughs> it might, but probably not. Um, what what else? Yeah, so hopefully I can get that. I, I really want to get rid of that credit card ASAP, you know. And I wish I had more stuff to sell, but I don't. Uh, I can sell my bike. Am I, no, I'm not going to sell my bike. It's a nice bike. I'm not going to sell it, though. I'm not going to sell that bike. Not going to sell it. Um, because, you know, I'd want, if I was going to sell it, I'd want it to knock out like half of that. And it's not that expensive of a bike. You know, it's like a $200, $300 bike. It's not a $900 bike. So, um, it's great that I like looking at it. <laughs> Um, and I look forward to when it's warm. Uh, that's my big thing. I don't like to ride a bike when it's cold outside. It's cold outside right now. Can't ride a bike. Uh, what else? What else? I want to get my room cleaned up. I want to get my house cleaned up. I want to get all this junk out of my house. Uh, I want to digitize my audio tapes and my videos. Gave my TV, gave my television, my only, my television that um it was a samsung 23 inch lcd tv i bought in 2007 for 900 dollars uh you can buy a tv like that for now new brand new for under 200 dollars so early adapter it's part of the reason i still got you know this credit card debt so um bought that stupid tv gave it to my I was going to sell it and I was like you know what no I'm not I'm going to give this TV away gave it to my parents um gave them my VCR gave them all my videotapes uh kept some of my DVDs a lot of DVDs I took to the used bookstore they can they buy my DVDs uh got a whole other box here of DVDs I don't take to the used bookstore they're going to buy those mm, keeping a select few uh Lord of the Rings Firefly Ren and Stimpy uh, from Earth to the Moon, some documentaries, some other stuff that I can't get on Netflix that I can't rent. Uh, gonna keep that stuff. Uh, some favorite movies: Solaris, Lost in Translation. And Solaris, by the way, the Russian version, not the George Clooney version. The Russian version. Um, what else? Star Trek. Got Star Trek on DVD. The original series, not the the original series. So. Cowboy Bebop, got Cowboy Bebop, got every episode and the movie. Um, so, going to keep all that. Going to keep those. I love those. I watch them over and over again. Don't get tired of them. Uh, so, I'm going to keep all that stuff. But, um, most of the rest of it's going away. So, what else we got in here? What else is going on? Talked about my health talked about my running, talked about being president or wanting to be president, talking about uh, minimalism, getting away from the consumer economy, what else did we talk about, talked about eating right, um, talked about work, um, talked about my, uh, have I mentioned my printer, my printer, can I take this, let me do this for just a minute. Whoa. my printer my lovely printer so let me put that back is that right yeah this printer is the best printer I've ever had it's a brother something cheapest brother I could buy at Staples um, best printer I've ever had every printer I've had since I bought my first computer in 1994 um uh, has been a piece of crap. Uh, this printer, I, and I don't print that much. I don't. I don't print that much. This printer right here has done everything I've asked it to do. It's done it well. It has not broke down. Uh, it has not run out of ink. I'm still using the same ink cartridges that I got with the printer. It's not printing lines and empty spaces and all this weird stuff. It hasn't run out of one color and not the other and all this kind of stuff. 
It's a great printer. It's a great printer. So if you're looking to buy a printer, an inkjet printer, buy a brother. Can't say enough about it. Might break tomorrow. Buy a brother. I don't care. Uh, what else? Video camera. Video camera is a Microsoft um, something or another. Um, great video camera. I like that video camera. Uh, oh, the software comes with it sucks, but uh, you can use Windows Live. Uh, I'm actually trying out Camtasia Studio right now, so um, that's what I'm using to record this video. But uh, the Windows Movie Maker Live works great. Works great. Sounds good. The mic sounds good on it. Um, what else? What else do I want? I feel like talking today. I feel like I want to do a really long, you know, episode here. Um, what else? What else do I want to talk about? Food. I've already talked about food. My kitchen. I got my kitchen in order finally. Um, I'm still paring down. That's the thing about. Let me talk. Go back and talk about minimalism real quick. But when you're start, when you're trying to get away from having so much stuff, you got to. You can't just throw everything out. You, your body won't allow you to do it. Your mind won't allow you to do it. Um, so, what you do is you get a box. I got one sitting right there. Can I show the box? Ooh, let's go. The box with the green bag in it. The box with the green bag. There it is. You saw it. Um, that box is it's, it's just a box that's got stuff in it that I'm going to take to Goodwill. So uh, you get one of those. You get a pretty big box. And uh, at first, the first thing you want to do when you want to give away all your stuff is... <laughs> uh, Get rid of all your clothes because they're bulky. Put them in trash bags. Take them to Goodwill. Then you get a big box, and uh, you take that big box and you just start putting stuff in it. You know, and uh, every time you go to your kitchen, every time you do this, every time you do that, you know, every time you pick up your pen, you look at that pen and you say, "Do I really need this pen? Do I? Do I need this pen? Do I? Do I need this? You know, do I need this spare set of keys? Yeah, I do need the spare set of keys to my car, but." You get my point. Um, like this right here. Oh, here we go. Right here. Do I need this master lock? Do, do I really need it? Um, do I need this other lock? Do I really need it? I don't use it. I haven't used these. These were sitting... Uh, this was sitting in the bottom of my laptop bag uh, since I don't know when. I don't know why it was sitting in there because I don't, I don't remember putting it in there. That's how long ago it's been. So... Didn't even know what was in there. This right here, I haven't used this since uh, I was a freshman in college. So, what? That was 1995? Uh, 94? 94, then into 95. So, what is that? 17 years? Haven't used it. 17 years. So, don't need it. Uh, don't need it. These these items will be going in the box. I have breakable items, so I can't throw them in the box right now. But those items will be going in the box. Um, yeah. So each time you pick up an item, say, "Do I need this item? You know, do I need this slotted wooden spoon that I use once a year? If that, you know, do I need this thing that I've never used in my entire life that came with a set of something that I've never used? Also, so." You just yeah. You just gotta start asking yourself, do I need this? Do I need it? Do I need it? No, you don't. Most of the stuff you don't need. So A number one, you don't need most of your stuff. A number two. Um B number seven. <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need all this stuff. So uh you know, the hardest part to get over, I think, is the emotional attachment. You, you get emotionally attached to your stuff. You know, like, my mom gave me that. My dad gave me that. Um, I've had this for 20 years. Um, I have a trash can under my desk right now, which is a great trash can. I love this trash can. And uh, I'm a big trash can aficionado. Uh, and 
this it, my mom bought this trash can to put my my brother and I's our Lego out she, she we put our Lego in this trash can and uh this is what we stored our Lego in and uh for whatever reason we started storing it in the uh this big blue barrel because we it wouldn't fit in there anymore so um it's a terrible uh, let me is it under here yes it is and I just took it out so there's no bag in it. But uh, let me see if I can pull this out. Uh, oh, it's developed a new crack. Great. That's a new one. But it, it looks, it's terrible. It's its still got the price tag on it from Walmart. Uh, and I don't, does anybody remember when Walmart used price tags? $2.96 my mom paid for this trash can. And uh, actually she probably had coupons so it probably didn't cost that. Um, but I put tape on it because uh, it's got some cracks in it and I don't the lid is gone I don't know what happened to the lid um, and I need some more tape to uh, tape it up there uh, but this is a great trash can it served me well I bought other trash cans since but this one it's a good size uh, it doesn't fill up right away and um, so I'm gonna keep that trash can it's got a little sentimental value but I'm gonna keep it it's functional there's other things that uh, people have given me, though. I j you just got to say, it's got to go. It's just got to go. You got to you got to sever the tie. You got to cut the cord. There is no cord. It's an inanimate object, you know. Your parents are not going to come into your house and say, where was that trash can I gave you 30 years ago to keep your Lego in? They don't know I have this trash can. They might now, now that I've done a video about it, although I don't think they know about my YouTube channel. But still, and even if they did, uh, they don't have internet. So, but, <laughs> uh, you don't need that. I mean, if I didn't need this trash can, uh, and it, if it wasn't to my suited, you know, my if it wasn't suited to my purposes, if it wasn't to my liking, I would get rid of this thing in a heartbeat. Uh, it's just an animal object. Um, it's nice that it has a story behind it, you know? I like having the story behind my trash can. My, who has a story behind their trash can? But there it is. Um, but I don't, I don't need it. And you also gotta quit telling yourself, um, what if I need this lighter? You know? What if? What if? What if? What if? You know? What if? You'll you'll get around it, you know. It's like um, and and on the cheapest stuff too, you know. Uh, you, you know you you buy uh, uh, what's a good example? You know, just like um, trash cans. We'll go back to trash cans. You buy ten trash cans because you live in a huge house and you can put trash cans anywhere you want. You move into a small apartment, you only have room for two trash cans. Uh, what if I move into a bigger house? I might need those trash cans again. And trash cans are three dollars a piece. You go, you know, <laughs> go buy another one. There, you know, if you take it to Goodwill and Goodwill takes it and sells it, you can go back there and buy it back from them. <laughs> and it's not even going to cost you the three dollars it would cost news. So. It's just a, it's a cost benefit analysis. Analysis, you know, do I need the, these ten trash cans taking up my space in a small apartment, or can I get rid of these small trash cans or all these trash cans? And if I do possibly one day move into a larger home later on, buy more trash cans again. So, um, what else? Uh, you know, now I'm thinking I should do a whole video about trash cans. So, and I can show you my whole trash can collection because I have two, three, four, five, at least five trash cans. So, in this one bedroom apartment, I have one under my sink in the kitchen that I never use. I have two in my bathroom, one of which I use and one of which I do not use. I have one in my kitchen that is not under the sink uh, that I use and then I have my trusty under the computer because this computer table I live at this computer table this is like uh, I eat here um, 
I watch all my news here. I read the internet, do all that stuff. So I'm, I do a lot at this table. So uh, I need a trash can here. You know, I can throw away my taco wrappers. <laughs> um, what else? You know, even like pictures and things like you, you know, I, I wouldn't want to throw my pictures away. Uh, but you could. You could get rid of your pictures. You could give them to your brother. You could give them to your sister. You can give them to your mother, your dad, whatever. And you can scan them all and keep the digital copies. And you can even keep the digital copies on the internet somewhere so that you can view them from anywhere. And also, if your house burnt down, they, you know, you would still have them. So, uh, I need to actually work on that. I do have, I do actually have photos that are not digitized that uh you know because before digital cameras they had these cameras that use this stuff called film and you would have to go get the film developed and they would turn the film into these photographs and they were like this big you know and uh maybe about that big depending on the picture to some of them were just tiny um uh but take those pictures and put them in books and you put them on shelves and but you don't need to do that anymore you you just take pictures and download them on your computer and post them on the internet you know um good stuff that's progress that's progress that's acquisition of knowledge too uh you're uh documenting things for the future what else do I, I got to there's one more thing I want to talk about I got to get back into reading got to uh, really been slacking on my reading you know I'll read a magazine article I got a couple of magazine subscriptions and I read the articles and um, you know I read a lot of stuff on the internet I look at a lot of news I look at this and that and I read a lot of Wikipedia I was one of those kids that read the encyclopedia a lot so um but I gotta get back into reading. I gotta, you know, and part of my problem is I uh, don't have a lot of fiction books right now. And I gotta get back into reading fiction, A number one. And A number two, I gotta read some nonfiction to go along with it. I gotta get back into reading. It's been years since I've been an avid reader, and I wanna get back into it. I want to, I want this book collection. I've got this book collection. I'm not gonna get rid of these books, right, until I read them. And I want to get rid of these books <laughs> really bad. So I need to get them read. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, I'm going to be working on that. I got to get back into reading. I might finish this video and start reading a book as soon as any. And I do have, a, I, I even got a Kindle. I like, what do you call that? A, a bibliophile? Somebody likes books? I got a Kindle. You know, I've read like one book on it. I need need to get rid of the Kindle, pretty much. But um, not that it's bad. It's it's a great piece of hardware. Works great. Looks great. Easy to read on. You know, would be ultra convenient if I read a lot, but I don't. So <laughs> uh, I need to get rid of it. Need to get rid of the Kindle. I don't know. It's I'm. It's tugging. It's, you know, over here and over here. Having a hard time convincing myself to get rid of this Kindle. But it's it needs to go. I can tell you that right now. The books, though. The books the books got to go, too. They got to go. I got to get them read. So, there's one book over there in particular that I have got to get read. And then, it is... I can't remember the name of the book. It's like, what do you do out there all day? I think I mentioned it in a previous video. Um, Got to get that one read. Got to get it returned to the Austin. I haven't lived in Austin since 2007. Got to get that returned to the library in Austin. I've already paid for the book. The book is paid for. But I feel so bad having that book here, you know? Because it's, it's not a book that was published widely, you know? I mean, you can. I think you can actually buy copies of it on the on Amazon, you know? But this is something that uh, a guy, a local guy in Austin, uh, uh, wrote, and it's about 
you know, the hill country there around Austin. And man, I I, I got to get that red and get it back to them so that they can have that for their own heritage. You know what I mean? And uh, I actually have a book over here in my book box that I'm I'm going to take to the Nashville Public Library. It's a book about the Nashville uh Nashville, Chattanooga and St. Louis uh railroad which used to be headquartered here in Nashville. Uh and goes into the whole history of the company. Um uh, it's not the most well-written book and uh, like it has it's like the first half and the second half. The first half is is it's pretty good. The second half is like uh they fired the editor or something, you know, and uh it just slapped it together. So uh, it was a lot of repeating the stuff from the front and things. So, a lot of great pictures, though. Man, great pictures. And if you're a, uh, a fan of history and a fan of railroad history, it's a great book. And uh, it needs to be in the Nashville Public Library. I looked online, they don't have a copy of it. So, I want to give them a copy. And I want people to check it out and read about the history of their own town. So, um, anyway, reading. Got to get to reading. Uh, that's all I got. I gotta call this quits. My voice is about to die on me. I know this video has been going on for quite a while. It's probably been at least an hour. So, uh, man, I'm tired too. I'm tired. I've been up all night, all day. Been up since like, I think I woke up about 3.45 in the afternoon. Worked, was it, almost 10 now? 10 in the morning, so... A little tired, and I had to be back at work at six. So, yeah, got to be back at work at six. So, uh, there we go. That's it. Video over. Bye.